What up, y'all? I'm Gabe Bush with NiceKicks.com, and today is December 31st, 2018, so you know what that means. I, with the rest of the Nice Kicks team, we've gone through every single sneaker release of 2018, and we've narrowed it down to the top 50. Basketball, performance, lifestyle, collabs, retros, we've gone through it all. I present to you the Nice 50. That most Air Max Animal Pack. This is the Air Max 1, but it also came out with the Air Max 95. Personally, this is my favorite because it comes with the zebra, tiger, and cheetah print. Definitely makes the shoe pop with the red swoosh as well as the green tab on the back. Uh, it's definitely more of a sleek and clean shoe just because the Air Max 95 is a little bit too bulky for me, so I personally rock this pair. You can't go wrong with the gum bottom sole. Definitely a shoe you can wear in the summertime. So this definitely made it clear that it's our top 50 list of 2018. When ASAP Rocky announced the partnership with Under Armour, nobody knew what to expect. And I think it's fair to say, we did not expect these. But, leave it to Rocky to do the unexpected. Yeah, a lot of people are going to write these off because of the Osiris D3 inspiration. But to write that off, is to write off what makes Rocky great. Rocky has always been the guy who moves in a lot of circles, appreciates things for different cultures, and unarchive things that were forgotten and slept on in the past. He did exactly that with his Under Armour shoe and they manage in to tie in both AUG Inspiration and Hover Technology. So, kudos to Rocky and UA. I think they delivered on their first one. Last decade saw the first Diamond Dunk, and by far one of the most beloved ones. But in 2018, Diamond and SB linked up again for a trio of SBs. The Dunk SB Low came back in the beloved Tiffany blue colorway, removable swoosh, and tonal white upper, black upper, and canary yellow for friends and family. Father of many styles, Kanye released his first official dad shoe with the Adidas Yeezy 700. While it's more aggressive than, say, a Monarch or some of the other offerings we see in the space, it is definitely one of the more unique Yeezy models from Adidas yet. While some people aren't really feeling the price point of $300, maybe even have said that they restocked many times, without a doubt, if anybody had a pair of these show up their doorstep, they'd be happy to wear them. And it's a shoe that will still matter years from now. The off-white Presto got a lot of attention again this year, but one Presto that should not be overlooked is the acronym Presto Mid. 2016 saw the first Presto Mid acronym project come out and was by far one of the best shoes of the year. According to Joe LaPuma, it was the shoe of the year. We'll still debate about that. This was by far and large one of the better releases from Nike Sportswear in 2018 and one of the strongest collabs. The most overused word in sneaker media is iconic. The most overused word in sneaker boardrooms is disruptive. But damn, Puma actually did disrupt the market with the Puma Clyde Core Disrupt. Branching back into basketball for the first time since 20 years, they updated Puma's Clyde silhouette, worn by Clyde Frazier of course, and got a fresh roster of new talent to lead the brand. While the shoe is good, it's not bad to look at, it's good to hoop in, and the most important part of the shoe is not even the shoe itself. It's Puma being back in basketball and doing so in a fun way. They're signing people off Twitter, they're having mascots show up at games. Basically, Puma aimed to disrupt, and they actually did.
the Adidas Ultra Boost OG. The sneaker community, for better or worse, loves their retros. And while this came back a little bit sooner than we're used to, we weren't mad at that so much as we were angry that we weren't able to get our hands on them, me included. A lot of people would say that hype was the driving force for this shoe when it initially came out, but as time went on and more iterations came out, a greater appreciation began to grow for the OG, despite it having some shortcomings that were fixed down the line. This wasn't the first Boost sneaker to come out, but the Ultra Boost was definitely one that made a huge initial splash and created waves that still linger today and really put Boost on the map. So shout out to Adidas for respecting the OG as we salute it as one of the top releases of 2018. It really doesn't take much to make a hit on the Air Jordan 1, especially when it comes in a combination of black, red, and white, which was seen on the bread toe that was a hit earlier this year. But what was really interesting is the color blocking on the shoe. It started with the shattered backboard moving to the bread toe, then this, the pine green, core purple, and then the soul fly Jordan 1. So shout out to the execution of all those colorways, especially the bread toe, which was able to make a strong and fresh impression on a color palette we know all too well. So for the Air Jordan 1 colored toes, this is the top shoe of 2018. Not often do you find a running shoe on the Nice Kicks 50, but the Nike Zoom Pegasus Turbo definitely deserves this spot. Nike took everything that was great about the Pegasus line and made it even greater with the Nike Zoom Pegasus Turbo. Nike Zoom X, Nike React, make a match made in heaven to make the Nike Zoom Pegasus Turbo one of the best shoes of the year. Damian Lillard has shown that he's an insane explosive player, so it's only right he brought it onto his shoe. This shoe came out in three different colorways, the green, red, and black. The green is my favorite, but you definitely can't go wrong with any of them. With a legendary collaboration like this, this definitely made our top 50 list. So this is the Pyre Moss Reebok Daytona Experiment 2. It's the second collaborative shoe with Pyre Moss and Reebok. Pyre Moss is a fashion brand that started in 2013 by Kirby St. Raymond. Uh, he's a black fashion designer, one of the few that is collaborating in sneakers right now. Uh, the shoe was retail for $200. There was a white and green colorway, and this colorway, as you can see, is paneled with pink and brown and charcoal gray. Uh, the shoe sold out pretty fast. Um, takes on old DMX technology but kind of in a new form and it is one of the best sneakers of the year and one that we're excited about and hope to see more from these two in the future. So now we're on to the Levi's Air Jordan 4. This was a very big shoe in 2018 the first pair, blue denim pair, released in January, and then the summer, white pair and the black companion pair released. All sold out, all sold through really well. Um, this is actually a pair that we received from Jordan Brand. So this is a clean pair. Most pairs you'll see these days are customized, but this is one that's still fresh. Probably one of the better shoes of the year. Great execution, great denim, very well done by Jordan Brand. Air Jordan 3 Black Cement. For a shoe like the Air Jordan 3, especially coming back in an OG colorway, we already knew that this was going to be one of the top releases of 2018. And with these Jordan Retros being remastered and this one coming back with the Nike Air on the back of the sneaker, this really solidified itself and made a stamp that I think will last for years to come. Not only that, but supply met demand very well. If you wanted the shoe, you were able to get them, but you also felt like they were still pretty exclusive without resale being too high or them being oversaturated with restocks. 
truth be told, I imagine these are going to come back in some form, but I can't really see how they're going to improve on it in the future. But yeah, Air Jordan 3, black cement, no doubt one of the best shoes of all time. So it only makes sense that it was one of the best releases of 2018. The Adidas Yeezy 500, coming in in four awesome colorways, the blush, super moon yellow, the salts, and the utility blacks. It's definitely a shoe that you can wear with anything. Super tonal colors, minimal branding, awesome suede and mesh upper, a great shoe. Also, the Kanye effect is real on these. Honestly, with Kanye and a dope shoe like this, this is definitely sold out. This is our for sure on our top 50 Nice Kicks 2018 list. So after Travis Scott released his Air Force One and Jordan Turner collaboration, the most anticipated of them all was the Air Jordan 4 Cactus Jack. So this shoe released this summer. It's widely considered one of the best sneakers of the year. It takes inspiration from the Houston Oilers, the uh, NFL team that is now defunct but uh, used to be huge in the city. They wore powder blue uniforms, it's red and white trim. Uh, they played at the Astrodome in Houston. Uh, which is no longer, but so yes, Astrodome was across the street from Astroworld, which was a theme park that is also no longer in Houston, but big important thing to kids from Houston, Travis especially, so this all kind of ties into a bigger theme. So also the cool thing about the Cactus Jack 4 is that there were two other unreleased pairs. So there was a dark purple pair and a dark gray pair. You might have seen those floating around. You might have seen those on Chase B, Easy, some other guys in Travis's camp. But no one else has really gotten to this point. Will they release next year? Maybe, maybe not. But this kind of goes to the entire story of this shoe and all the hype around the release. And for most, it's considered the shoe of the year. Uh, so you guys have to let us know on that. The Union LA Jordan 1. This shoe in particular came out with two different colorways, the black toe and the blue toe, but I like the black toe a little bit better. It's more like neutral colors and I can wear it with a lot more things. The quality on it is on point. They match the laces with the outsole. Super nice touch and insanely limited release for sure. All of these factors for the shoe definitely made it clear that this is on our top 50 list of 2018. So one of the most excitable shoes of the year is the Nike React Element 87. So the shoe first debuted last year on the runway in the Paris Fashion Show in Japanese brand undercover show. Uh, so after a long wait, the shoe finally released this summer, uh, 160 retail, and as everyone knows, it's one of the biggest sneakers of the year. Uh, so some of the finer points about the shoe is the uh, translucent paneling and also the React technology that you can see on the midsole and on the outsole. Uh, this is the first big hit for React technology. This shoe was predated by the Epic React, which is a distance runner, but this is the first lifestyle hit uh, for React technology. And as you know, uh, next year, React technology will transcend into basketball and to other categories but this will be held as the first big React shoe and we can't wait to see where this technology goes next. The Air Jordan 11 Concord hardly needs any introduction and trust me, you've probably heard the history of Bunch by now. But the greatest of all times, greatest of all time, made it back in 2018 and is arguably released in the best version since its debut in 1995. Inside and out, Jordan Brand overhauled the most beloved shoe and got it the best that it's ever been. Truth be told, this was not my favorite shoe when Nike did the vote back, but the shoe definitely grew on me. I think that what is so significant about the 97 one by Sean Witherspoon is that it represents 2018 in ways that I will remember this year. 
There are a lot of things about the shoe that might, you know, catch your eye. And there's some other things that are also important to me and to others that are going on with this product that make it a good representative of 2018. One of the things that caught me by surprise was the idea of mixing 87 tooling of the Air Max 1 and the 97 upper. Initially, I wasn't a big fan of the full length Air Max going away on the 97. But there was something beautiful about the idea of a 97 upper and the Air Max 1 bottom that released only 10 years earlier. If you think about the history of the Nike Air Max line, to go from a single window unit to the futuristic and modern Nike Air Max 97 in only 10 years just really speaks to what Nike accomplished with that series in such a short amount of time. It's been pretty well known that Sean Witherspoon himself is vegan. I thought that it was a really awesome detail that throughout the shoe there was not one piece of animal product used. Definitely very on brand for Sean and a th way to think about for the future. Do we need to use leathers and suede? Can we use other things in place of that in, in future products? I thought it was a really awesome thing to see that. I think that especially this year, as more and more people are warming up to the idea of plant-based lifestyles, to see a shoe represent this year as well. Lastly, and I think most importantly, is that call it an eclectic colorway, uh, you know, call it some funky style with the corduroy. This shoe really represents the way I will remember 2018. This idea of dipping back into the vault and celebrating these throwback looks and styles and colors and materials and brands that we haven't seen or thought about in over 20 years um, kind of come to life when I look at this shoe. Subtle details throughout the shoe also really brought another story to life. You know, the VA to LA telling Sean's personal story and his journey of going from Virginia out to Los Angeles as round two expanded. Uh, every little thing like the removable Velcro patch on the tongue, again, small detail, but made a lot to the shoe. Lastly, and most importantly to me, every time you step into the shoe, I felt like the shoe was smiling at you before you even put it on. What better way to start the experience of wearing a product when, well, the shoe is literally smiling at you. While there have been so many great shoes that have released in 2018, if there's one shoe I'm going to remember this year for, it's these. Shout out to Sean, shout out to Nike, congratulations, you guys have made the shoe of the year. And there you have it, the top 50 sneakers of 2018, aka the nice 50, but that's according to us. What do you think should have been the top shoe of this year? Let us know in the comment section, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more. I'm Gabe Ocean, signing off for 2018. See you guys next year.